Hi, this is Brian Fogarty, and in this video what we're going to do is look at how to run ordered logit and probit regression models in R. And so um, I've already put in here the data that we're using, and I've already gone through and, and made the, recode, uh, the recoding and everything like that, so let me just go through it uh, quickly. So we're going to use here the 2014 Scottish Social Attitudes data. So this is uh, saved for me as a Stata data set. So I'm going to use the foreign library and then just read it in using the read.dta function and just call it data. So I'm just going to run all that. Okay. And then, all right, so ordered logit and probit um, and any other kind of version that you would have doing this requires a uh, dependent or outcome variable that is ordered in some way but has um, you know less than seven categories or something like that. Um, if it's more than seven oftentimes you can just use linear regression but if it's less than then you really should be using an ordered logit or probit regression. And so what we're going to do with this data set we're going to our outcome variable here is going to be trust in the British government and so this variable here has four values to it. Um, we'll look at more of this, the values of it, uh, in, in later videos in this section when we look at doing interpretations and stuff like that. So the variable we're going to use um, is this one here that's initially stored as govtrust underscore no na, which is just a form that I've created uh, where I got rid of all the missing values. And so the current version of it goes, uh, the, the lowest value is um, always trust the British government, and the highest value is never trust. So what I'm going to do here is just flip that coding um, so that it goes from never trust to always trust. So this is this section here, right? This is just a variable, okay? And then these are, are the recoding uh, using the recode function from the car package and then we're going to make sure it's a factor by wrapping as factor around it and then the other thing that we need to do to, just to make sure that it's being read in correctly is use this ordered function here so this just assures that um, uh, that R knows that it's a factor variable but it's ordered okay so let's just highlight all this and run this Okay, so you'll see here, I don't have any labels on it right now, but the lowest category one here is never trust, which is 592, and then sometimes, usually, and then always. So again, this is Scotland, and so a lot of people never trust the British government, and very few people always trust. Okay, so we're going to use, in this example, three different predictor variables. I'm going to use education as our first one here. Um, and I'm going to recode this as well, just so that it goes from the least amount of education to the most amount. And then it has a quirky category in here that is whether or not someone has a diploma, a foreign diploma, which doesn't really tell you anything about the level of it, whether it's, it means like a secondary school one or a PhD. So... We're just going to get rid of that, and we're going to flip that recoding, and we're going to make sure that it's being read in as numeric by using the as numeric function right here. So I'm just going to highlight this and run this. Okay, the, the second predictor we're going to use is the strength of someone's Scottish identity. Um, so this, this just asks how Scottish um, do you f feel personally, or some version like that. Um, and if we take a look at this here, there's seven values to it, and it, one is uh, you feel very weakly Scottish, um, uh, which is so more British than Scottish, and then seven is you feel very strongly. All right, so we're going to also just make sure that this is read in as numeric and then use a, a simpler name here as um, Scott. All right, and then the final variable we're going to use, uh, we'll just take a look at here because it's actually the one, it's already in the format that we want, is uh, what's called ref vote dumb, which is a, um, it just asks how someone planned to vote in the 2014 Scottish independence referendum. So one, 
here means they plan to vote yes, and zero, they plan to vote no. So again, we'll look at, we'll, we'll be adding more values, uh, labels to this with when we do the actual um, interpretations of, of the regressions. Okay, so now that we got our, our um, variables all coded in the way that we wanted to, we can actually run the regression. So I should mention, um, if you well, if you saw the previous um, section of videos on binary outcome, um, it's the same here. I'm using an I'm using an R markdown file. That's what that's why it looks like this. All right, so I'm just going to come down here, and we're going to do an ordered logit model okay so right with our markdown you need to put in the code chunk so we set it like that all right so we're going to use a function called polr or polar which stands for proportional odds Log logistic regression uh, which is just another name for doing um, an ordered logit model and though even though it's called proportional odds um, you can also do probit and c log log with it so this this function comes from the mass library which is a default package when you install r it will def default um, and install that package all right so we're going to do summary i'm just going to wrap the summary function around our um, regression object so that it all prints out at once so we're going to do model one, all right, that's the name of our object, and then polar, okay, that's our function, and then the the rest of this looks exactly the same as as in the binary outcome or any linear regression um, in R. So we have trust is our outcome variable, and then tilde, and then we have here, um, we're going to do ref vote dumb plus um, sorry plus education plus Scott okay and then we tell it what the data is that we're using so data equals data that's just the name of it and then let's put this in just to be um, clear we're gonna do any action equals na omit so that just says so na right is for missing values so any actions is saying what should you do with any missing values um, and then equals NA omit just says omit those values. And then we're going to specify here that method equals logistic. Okay. All right. So this should all look good. So let's highlight this. Oh, I need to run that mass package. Okay. Let's highlight this and run this. All right. I'm going to pull this up some so we can get a better look. All right, so the output looks similar to what you've seen before. The one thing that often throws students is the output here isn't showing us that magical p-value. <laughs> All right, so um, we can still figure out what is statistically significant in the traditional um, definition using the t-value. So a t-value, roughly you're looking for a t, an absolute value of 2. Um, technically, it's 1.96 if the n is large enough, but 2 is usually what we're looking for here. So uh, looking at these two t values, we see that um, the ref vote dumb is significant and the Scott variable is significant. And so uh, education is not because it's below 2. So uh, the negative coefficients mean that, so this is a dumb, we, again, we're going to do other variables where we actually interpret this, but um, that means that if you plan to vote yes, then you trust the British government less than those who plan to vote no. And then for the Scott variable, this also has a negative coefficient. That means that someone who's stronger, has stronger Scottish identity than the um, they're less likely to trust the British government. Okay. All right, so we can look at some um, of the model um, information here. Hold on, I'm just trying to scroll this so I can get a better view here. So we can look at the log likelihood, which on its own doesn't really tell us that much. Um, but log lick is the function for model one. Okay, so again, right, you'd use this to compare models. 
And then if you want to look at the pseudo r squared, which I talked about in the previous sections of videos, I think it was the second video on model evaluation, um, we can do that as well. We're going to use the uh, PSCL package. All right, which gives you a, oh, I already ran it, but normally when you first do it, it gives you a whole bunch of information. And we're going to use the function P uppercase R two, and then the model name. All right, so we can just highlight that. And this gives us all the pseudo R squared values, which again, um, doesn't really tell us much on its own because you can't, right? So I talked about this in the previous section, but you can interpret these like you would with uh, R squared in uh, linear regression. And then uh, one last thing we're going to look at here with this one is we can look at the confidence intervals just to double check that everything is working correctly. So we're going to do conf int, conf int and then model one comma and then the level we want to look at level equals 0.95. All right. So that's just telling us, taking a minute. All right, so again, when you're looking at these, you're looking to see whether or not there's a zero included in the confidence interval. If it is, then it's not statistically significant. And so um, we see, right, we see that ref, vote, dumb, and Scott do not include zero, but education does. So these, the confidence intervals here will always line up with the conclusions that you make from the regression output in terms of what is statistically significant and what is not statistically significant. Okay, so if we want to do um, ordered probit, all we need to do here is I'm just going to steal the um, com the code from above, and we're just going to do ordered probit regression. All right, I'm just going to create a new code chunk. True. All right, close that. I'm just going to paste that in. And then I'm just going to change this to model two, just so we have a different saved object. And then instead of logistic, all we do is change that to probit. Okay, and then highlight that and run that. And what you're going to get, right, is very similar conclusions that you made from the ordered logit here. We receive uh, ref vote dumb and Scott are statistically significant and education is not. And then you can go ahead and do the same um, sets here of um, looking at the log likelihood and the pseudo r squared and the confidence interval. So if you just take that, so I just stole this code here. So log lick model two. All right. And then we don't need the library because we already put that in. So PR two model two. Okay. And then conf. And we just change that to model two. All right, so that's it for this video. Um, so it was just a way to introduce doing ordered logit and probit regression in R. Um, so as I've been alluding to, talking about, we'll have some more videos coming up about interpreting um, these coefficients and also for testing the parallel regression assumption. All right, so that's it. Thanks for watching.